You know, uh, Paulie, uh, and, and for those of you who are joining, just joining us, we're talking with managing editor of Gotham Baseball Magazine, Paul Greco, who's uh, talking to us about the Met prospects that, uh, and, and as well as the Yankee prospects that he saw in the Arizona Fall League. And, and Paul, I uh, just wanted to, before we get to the Daniel Murphy interview, I just wanted to tell you that, uh, you know, your article, uh, you know, the, the AFL Prospect Watch article that you uh, gave us at uh, Gotham Baseball Magazine today is getting a lot of critical praise. And uh, I just want to say from, uh, from my standpoint that you did a hell of a job and you really did a very thorough, you know, examination of not only your own expertise, you know, like Joe, uh, you know, Paul, uh, for those of you who don't know, Paul is also a very, very accomplished athlete. Uh, he was a scholarship uh, soccer player at the University of Vermont, played internationally, and is also a hell of a baseball player. So, you know, when he's telling you that, uh, when, folks, when, when, when Paul tells you that uh, somebody has pinpoint control, it's not like some wide-eyed guy like me sitting behind the plate going, ooh, he, it went everywhere he said it would go. <laughs> no, this is a guy who is very critical and very, very uh, accurate in his descriptions and in his analysis. And, uh, Paulie, uh, let's get to the last interview, which I'm sure all the Met listeners are out there are, are pining for. Uh, you know, this guy, Daniel Murphy, I know we talked a lot about him uh, during the course of the end of the season. And he's a guy, he, I mean, look, let's face it, this guy is the, is the Met fan's new Wally Backman. He really is. I mean, he has totally captured the imagination and made this team likable. Is he for real? And, and uh, you know, what was your impression of him? Uh, give us a little uh, taste of your impression of him before we play the interview. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, Daniel Murphy was not the type of guy that you would have thought had been at the major league level. Uh, was genuine to me. I mean, you know, opened up, you know, to me again. You know, I, I replayed again where he's sitting there joking around with me uh, prior to while those guys were actually stretching out uh, and throwing. Just very approachable guy, very likable guy, uh, and knows – knows his weakness, guys. That's, you know, that's why I asked Jack Boyd uh, about the defensive problems because a lot of scouts that were down there, the NFL said that, you know, the Mets are going to have to get this guy in the lineup because of his bat, but it's the defensive liability uh, that he holds may be the reason why you won't see him in the lineup as much. Uh, so very interesting, a contrast between what Jack Boyd said about his defense. I had an opportunity to see him uh, take a lot of ground balls. He was at second base the entire time that uh, they were out there working, and he's starting to, you know, he's starting to get from what I was seeing, uh, the footwork really needs a lot of work, guys. Uh, you know, the turning the double play, he was working a lot with uh, turning double plays. Didn't seem to really have the pivot that you probably want to see uh, out of a second baseman. Didn't seem to be that quick. But, again, this kid has a tremendous bat, and that's what's going to get him in the lineup. And that's why I made the reference to Mark DeRosa. You know, uh, he's getting ready to go to Puerto Rico. He's going to be working in left field. And, you know, this is a guy that uh, has the ability to be a super utility, you know, uh, I hate to bring up the name Kevin Mitchell, but, you know, that's kind of what it reminds me of back in, in the 80s. This is a, Kevin Mitchell was the same type. could play catcher, uh, could go to second, uh, could go to first, could go third. This is a guy that could play all around the infield, could play every outfield position, and I think it's going to be good for his career because this is a guy that has 20 home, uh, home run potential. And, you know, the thing is that this guy has a combination of speed and power. He started still, I think he was 10-plus stolen bases in the minor leagues last year. Although that's not part of his game, Mark, you know, it's something he talked off uh, camera about, saying, that that's one of the things he's going to be working on uh, this offseason. Okay, and let's listen to the interview that Paul Greco did with Max Daniel Murphy. I hear Daniel Murphy. Daniel, I hear Daniel Murphy. Daniel uh, had a pretty great season in 2008, a lot of uh, expectations, and kind of lived up to it. New York fans really love what you did. First game out there, crashing into a wall in left field after really not playing in the outfield since spring. Talk a little bit about uh, the 2008 season for you. Well, I have to say uh, that this was a, this was a season that, that I was, was very excited going into the year and, and very pleased, minus not making the playoffs at the end of the year. But again, I can't say enough about the, the opportunity the organization gave me and uh, and and also the, the staff, the minor leagues that, that prepared myself and Nick Evans to, to, to try to produce as soon as we did get to the big leagues. So talk about the experience. I mean, we are in a pennant race. You know, it's not every day that you have that opportunity when you get called up to be right in the middle of things. Was there any, like, added pressure on you or the guys, the veterans, just really uh, supportive? Well, they, you know, the, the Jerry and the, the veteran guys just basically, you know, told the young guys, you know, you guys just go play. You know, we, we're going we're to take care of this. We're going we're gonna to play well and make it happen. And, you know, there, there's always pressure in New York and in a pennant race, but, I, you know, I was talking to Easley and Damon Easley, and, you know, one thing he said, enjoy it. 
because he's been he's been in the big league 16 years. I don't think he, he's ever made the playoffs. And so he said, you don't you don't know when these are going to come. So enjoy it every day. You don't know the next time you're going to be at a pennant race. And so all I tried to do was be consistent, try to help the team win that day. So you're here working at second base. Uh, what has the organization told you as far as what your role possibly could be for the 2009 season? Uh, the only thing I know is that they want me to be ready for spring training, and uh, that's all I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to try to get more crystal in defense and uh, second base, left field, try to stay sharp at the dish, and uh, be in the best shape of my life when spring training gets in. You're also going to Puerto Rico. What, uh, what are your plans for out there as far as uh, winter ball? Uh, I think I'm playing the outfield there, so I'm just going to treat it just like the season, you know, the organization is, and, and, and Ponce have, have given me a, an opportunity to get another you know, 200 ABs, and I'm going to try to take as full advantage of that in my time in the field uh, as possible, and then hopefully carry that into spring training and, and try to make a ball club. So when you talk about making a ball club, have they talked to you about it as far as what in preparation you actually need to make the ball club? I mean, there's going to be plenty of openings, seems like, this year, so have they expressed anything like that? No, I think that, you know, that they, they, uh, they, they want me to come in in good shape, ready to go, and compete for a job from day one, and that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, I'm going to do some speed training when I get home. I'm going to get in the weight room, and, uh, you know, there's nothing guaranteed here, and I'm going to try to put myself in the best position to, to help the New York Mets in 2009. What, could his voice be any deeper, by the way? It's the same thing. He's got a Man. great voice. He's like uh, the, he's like the quiet stone. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so so you came away from from that interview, Paul, very impressed, Bill. No? Oh, absolutely. Like I said, uh, kept his composure. You know, I was I was waiting and waiting. You know, give me a sec. And uh, again, this is a, a very Im- impressive young man. And you know, nothing but good things. You know, I, I had the opportunity to sit around uh, the stands and you know talk a little bit uh, with the fans that were waiting for autographs. And everybody was there, you know, to see him. And he signed every piece of autograph that those folks had. And granted, there's not a lot of people there. It's not like you're at a major league game. But you know, he stood there. He wasn't playing in, the, in that game that I was uh, that, that I was at. So he had plenty of time. And again, very likable guy, uh, jokester, as I've said a couple times now. Uh, just a, a great all-around guy. And, you know, uh, people accuse me sometimes of being a rah-rah guy for the Brooklyn Cyclones organization and, and the way that thing is set up in the Penn League for the New York Mets. And, I, I, you know, Daniel Murphy played there. Nick Evans played there. You know, this is a place that really prepares you for New York. I mean, it really, really does. I mean, Daniel Murphy is the same guy, folks. Nick Evans is the same guy, Mike Jacobs, all these guys that came through Brooklyn and are in the major leagues now, they are, to a man, more accessible, more polite, more outgoing with the fans and the media than, than, than anybody. And I think that that was, you know, really a brilliant move. I mean, I understand why the Mets did it. But, you know, just from an organizational standpoint, player development standpoint, I mean, it really is impressive to me.